Hey guys, this is Ed, Paul, and Anna of Current Brand Media, and we are here to tell you a little bit more about our sponsor. Sportsball is a great subscription service geared towards minor league baseball fans. Each box features a different minor league team. You get a box every three months with minor league baseball gear, including different styles of hats like Ed's favorite, the dad hat. The cost is less than $12 a month. Proceeds from each box goes to More Than Baseball, the only nonprofit dedicated to the well-being of minor league baseball players. We all know that Parents' Days are coming up this summer, so if you've got a mom or a dad or a grandma or a grandpa who are particularly difficult to buy for, but you know they're baseball fans, this is the answer, guys. Meet your new favorite team at sportsballbox.com. Is there anybody there? <laughs> The first professional baseball game in history was played in Fort Wayne. Um, the Kikiangas. You know, yes. So that's something not everyone knows. There's a marker in town. It was less than a mile from the house we were in when I started this. I'd run past it in the mornings. Just things like that that people don't know. And also baseball design to me as somebody who likes retro vintage looking stuff. What's up, Dad Hat Crew? Ed here. And on this episode, I give you guys Logan Whining. He is the owner and creator of Old Ford Baseball Company out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. He created logos such as, um, well, let's go back. He has reimagined uh, logos for such as teams such as the Daisies of the uh, All American Girls Professional Baseball League. He's also done the Kikiangas of Fort Wayne. That's right, Kikiangas guy. It, this team was one of the two teams who played professional baseball, very first game professional baseball in 1871 against the four cities of Cleveland. Kikiangas won, Cleveland lost. Womp womp. I'm just kidding. Um, we had a lot of fun. And then we also go into his process of that he goes to while designing a logo such as the Daisy, such as Kikiangas, or even the Fort Wayne Scouts, which was a professional softball team. Finally, we discuss a little bit of work that he's doing with our friend Mark Vikas of Baseball um, Ballpark Hunter, uh, which is a lot of a lot of fun, right? Uh, so make sure you guys sit back and enjoy uh, this uh, conversation uh, with Logan. All right. Well, I want to welcome you guys to yet another episode of the Dad Hack Chronicles. My name is Ed, and with me today, I have the founder of Old Ford Baseball Company. It's a clothing company out of Indiana. I'm super excited. Uh, Logan, how are you doing, my friend? I'm good, Ed. Excited to be here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask about the company and everything, but before I do, how did you become a fan of the sport, my friend? You know, I think growing up, I... My dad definitely led me into it. Um, you know, I, before I even remember, I know he was always into huge Cubs fan, diehard Cubs fan. So I was always watching the Cubs before I remember, but, you know, he's grew up in the Chicagoland area. So, you know, I was born in 95. So mm -hmm. right in the middle of the bulls being yep. huge, like yep. I had Michael Jordan posters on my wall, like he painted me a custom, you know, Chicago Bulls logo toy box that I had forever. Nice. You know, so I think, you know, he's told me about us getting up early Saturday mornings and watching lacrosse on TV, like anything sports, we did it. Um, you know, but I think baseball is just always really attracted to me. Um, and he was a big card collector, got me into card collecting nice. to, okay. a, to a crazy extent where, it probably drove my mom crazy more than anything, but I would just sit in the living room with cards, you know, cards spread out all over the living room, sorting them any way possible. Um, so I can name you about any night, mid eighties to two thousands baseball player and tell you what they look like on their card. Cause I looked at it every day for years. That's so, amazing. Yeah. My, my brother was the same way. He was, he's still to this day, a huge baseball card collector. I never got into it to be honest with you. Cause like I've, I always liked the other aspects yeah. of like baseball, but he was all a huge collector. I mean, but I'm telling you, I know how they, I know how that feels, right? Once you get hooked, 
you're done. That's it, man. Oh yeah. I still think about getting back into it, but you know, looking now at the investment it takes to be a, be in really seriously into it. I just can't bring myself to go down that road again. <laughs> um, it was different when it was all my dad's leftover cards, right? That, you know, the junk wax ones that were costing him 80 cents a pack for mm-hmm. 20, totally different than what it is now than so, what it is now exactly yeah. and they are expensive but now and also now you got these nfts you got like all right. these digital cards i'm lost i'll be honest I, with you yeah, i have no idea <laughs> so so you're a cubs fan huh yes well that's a shame because you know they beat my at that point the indians in the 2016 world series which was a great series i'll be yes. honest with you that was a great series you know, I, I was a little upset, but at the same time, you couldn't be mad because it was the Cubs who won it, right? Like, it's been right. waiting forever. It's like a long, both teams were waiting forever. My team is still waiting. <laughs> this year, then it's not going to happen. Uh, but I think we're both, both of our teams are in the rebuilding year. So, yes. I, you know, but it was a great series, man. It oh. was an, oh. And after 2016, I don't really even care that they lose now. Like I feel <laughs> I've talked to other friends who are Cubs fans and we just have that weight lifted off our shoulders where it's like, I, I don't feel the stress and the misery. I felt every other year they were terrible before. Right. That. But it's it was cool away. though. Like I, I, you know, as I'm growing up in Cleveland, right. Like, you know, during the day, you always yeah. knew that, you know, in the day you had to watch Cubs. Cause it was like, you know, it's, it was all oh, yeah. over, right? Like TBS was everywhere. Right. So it was like, you saw Cubs games because right. that's what it was. So I never really had this, like a lot of people have the, this like hate for other teams. I don't really, you know, I've gotten to the point where it's just like, there's no point of hating any teams anymore. Right. Cause it's just right. like players come and go all the time. So there's no point. Right. Yeah, that's, you know, I grew up in that it was still the era of everybody hated the Yankees because you had guys that had been there forever that had, you know, those guys that all came up mid nineties that stayed to mid two thousands, you know, right. where it was a team that you could easily hate. But even now, like, I don't like the Yankees, but, oh, I still but I'm not going to root Rizzo for them. And, right. you know, judge, I have nothing wrong with judge. And like, they've brought in a lot of, a lot of good guys. Right. I'm not going to, don't get me wrong. You know, I mean, I don't hate them, but doesn't mean that I'm going to go right. out tomorrow and root for them. There's not, sure. that's not going to happen no. <laughs> at all. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I get that, man. I get that. So, so let me ask you. So uh, tell me about this, this idea of yours, like, you know, w- walk me through, like, or you're the side all of a sudden one day you're like, you know what, I'm going to start a, a clothing company. How that started. <laughs> Yeah. So I am a self-taught graphic designer. Uh, I've worked in uh, D-League basketball for about six seasons and then was on the college athletics side um, for three years up until actually just the other day. It was my last day um, in collegiate athletics. Um, you know, So I've always had sports design mm. as a part of my job, uh, again, self-taught. So it's grown over the years, but you know, was always working on freelance projects for different people. Um, but I've always kind of had an entrepreneurial spirit yeah. to me, um, you know, and always wanted to have the right idea. I follow a lot of brands and companies, clothing companies, art companies, just different brands, even someone like yourself who kind of found a niche, mm-hmm. you know, that you were able to provide something that brings you joy, but is also not something everyone else is doing and you're able to make it different. And so I've always kind of looked for that, you know, you toy around for ideas. Um, and a lot of the time they just fall through and you just, (laughs) you're you're kind of dead end. You go, this isn't, this isn't anything or somebody else does that or whatever. Uh, and this, I kind of started about a year ago, um, toying around with the idea of something Fort Wayne baseball specific, uh, Mm -hmm. like you said, in Indiana, um, you know, being a huge sports fan, growing up in Fort Wayne, my whole life, being a big sports history buff as well, you know, kind of knowing the, the impact of baseball in this community. And it's not something that's celebrated a ton. I mean, right. the tin caps are here and they're wildly popular and successful. Um, and I know we'll talk a little bit about the daisies coming up. That's one people are aware of in the community, but, you know, the first professional baseball game in history was played in Fort Wayne. Um, the Kikiangas. You know, yes. So that's something not everyone knows. There's a marker in town. It was less than a mile from the house we were in when I started this. I'd run past it in the mornings. 
just things like that, that people don't know. And also baseball design to me as somebody who likes retro vintage looking stuff, you know, baseball fits into that more than any other sport. Definitely. Um, so kind of, that's where I got the idea and then mm -hmm. just started working on designs. Um, you know, as that's the part that I enjoy being able to do. Um, and the ideas just started to come together and I figured I'd go ahead and give it a shot and kind of see, you know, if I put some stuff on sale, you know, what the reaction would be on social media, what people would think. And it, uh, it's gotten really good reaction so far. And I've I'm really a fan, man. I'm it. a fan. Yeah. No, I've really enjoyed, um, you know, seeing people's reaction and knowing, being able to do something, I'm not in it to make tons of money or it's not a full-time thing, but you know, if, right, it's but if it to, takes off, so be yeah. it, right? Oh, for sure. And if it's something that I can enjoy that I can bring to other people and they enjoy it, that's a success for me. I like that. Um, so you just like all of a sudden, like, you know, what? I'm let's, let me, I'm just going to start, you know, doodling here and there. And you said, you know, and I want to go back to this because it caught me off guard is you're <laughs> a self-taught um, graphic designer. You taught yourself how to yes. do all of this. Yep. When I was, so I've worked for the Fort Wayne Mad Ants um, in the D league yeah. uh, and started as an intern uh, when I was in high school, actually. But as after a few years, you know, they, they kind of couldn't get rid of me. If they didn't have a job for me, I was happy to be in the office. I wanted to just be around, learn yes, about the boring. industry, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. Uh, they really didn't have anybody that was doing graphic design. We had some, the PR person, media person, you know, would, yeah. could mess around with a template to make final score stuff or whatever. Um, but I kind of had always been interested whether I recognized it or not, but mm -hmm. I always kind of had an eye for design and social media graphics and things like that. So I kind of just started playing around with it in my spare time um, there when I was in the office, cause they had Photoshop on a computer and you it know, the free. fact, yeah. And the fact that there was nobody really doing it, everybody in that office, it was a small office was kind of like, Oh, that's great. Go ahead. Put it out. Go so, ahead. Why not? Like I look back now and the fact that some of those things that like I put billboards up in town that we spent a lot of money to put up that I can't imagine that anyone signed off on at the time, but Hey, you know, it, it helped give me confidence to keep going with it, uh, you know, and just get better and better. And I really found a passion for it. So you can learn anything on YouTube. So if you have the passion, right? if you have the passion and the eye for it, from a design point of view, you can learn the technique. And, yeah. you know, if you're like, oh, well, how do you make this, get this effect? It takes a quick Google search and you can figure it out. It's being able to have the patience and the eye for it that I think sets someone who can actually create good designs from somebody who can just use the tool. That's awesome. Listen, a lot of people, are, <laughs> I learned how to do podcasting because of YouTube. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Right. I was like, all right, so what do I need to do? I told my wife, like, oh, I'm going to, honey, I'm going to, I want to do a podcast. What do you think? She goes like, all right. And I went on Google. And like you said, I, it, YouTube taught me how to do a podcast. Like my first episode with John Saudi, I mean, my, and I'm glad that he was my first guy. Cause he was like, you know, but it was like, I was so nervous that first time it was insane. And I'm sure you're like, you know, when you're doing your graphic design, you're like, yeah. I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, and I think the important part is, and you've done this, obviously you can hear it, like you said, over the episodes, but right. you have the patience and the passion and the, the recognition of like, this wasn't great. And this is what I need to improve on. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I think what sets people apart from somebody who can, okay, they can get a podcast off the ground because all you need is really, a, you could do it into your phone and right. put it on, Pretty much. on SoundCloud if you want, but to be able to recognize kind of the, the different things you can do and the different steps to improve it. That's where you can really set yourself apart and designs the same way. Exactly. I was just going to say, it's like, and I'm sure you're like, you know, and you, you take inspirations from everywhere. Cause like, I mean, yeah. that's, that's the beauty of, uh, in my opinion, right. You know, that of graphic design, you can just take it from anywhere yeah. and in, incorporate it into your own designs. Yeah, definitely. If you look through my phone and my computer, I've got so many screenshots of things that you're just scrolling and you see whether it was an old newspaper ad or, you know, being right now 
so focused on Fort Wayne history. There's things where an old restaurant, an old building, old pictures of yeah. a stadium. We literally, I found pictures of the old minor league stadium from like 1913 that flooded purely because there was a display at the library and we stopped in the library one afternoon when we were walking to use the bathroom. Like, <laughs> and I was just like standing outside and like, Oh, what's this little exhibit about Fort Wayne history? And it was pictures of the flooded stadium in 1913. So I'm like taking pictures of the exhibit and like, that's amazing. Someday, you know, hopefully I can work that inspiration into a design and into, if not even a design, but to use those pictures and kind of publicize that a little more and build it into the, the history of uh, yeah. baseball here. So, so let, let's talk about a little bit about that then, like yeah. a little bit of history, right? So you, you got like, you know, which was, and, and this is how I got to really know about you and your, in your company was the, uh, the Kikiangas, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and I was like, okay, so, you know, I was doing an interview um, with uh, Hardy, the hat guy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he's also from Indiana, yeah. like he collects all these hats from there and everything. What's up, Hardy? Um, <laughs> but then, you know, in, in he told me about this and I, you know, and, and again, as a history guy myself in baseball, right. Yeah. I'm like, I have no idea, no right. idea. This was the first game. And then I see your, you have a dad hat and I'm like, Oh my God, this is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one, that's a thing that I think people kind of know if you're a sports fan, because mm -hmm. it always pops up in the, this day in history, every year, somebody posts like, did you right. know the first, whatever, but I don't think in Fort Wayne, even it's not well known. The The place where the stadium was is along the river, kind of hidden back in a neighborhood, honestly. Like you, there's a sign along a more busy road that says site of first major league baseball game with an arrow. <laughs> and that's kind of the extent of like, people don't know even what that means. And you go back and there's a nice marker for it. Um, but, you know, and from that time in the 1800s, there wasn't design they didn't it was pretty much teams just put the city name or their team name yeah. you know sewed onto the wool uniforms and the best thing that we've got now is that k logo um, yeah. that i've used and did the team actually use that i don't know and there might mm -hmm. be somebody who could tell you but that's kind of that's what's on the marker and it fits that time frame. It fits what you see from some right. old newspaper clippings. But to try to modernize that and build it into more of a modern brand, um, you know, is a cool thing for me. And I I really enjoy being able to do that because it's not something that you can even go on eBay and be like, oh, can we find a game used jersey from? The yeah, you, right. you don't like, find nothing anything. Exists. Yeah, it doesn't exist. So that's a definitely was one that I saw a big. Uh, a big need for and, and there's not much that you can go on no colors right. or anything like that and you just took it upon yourself it's like yeah black and white looks actually pretty good you know yeah yeah and that's been kind of the fun part is mm -hmm. you know you get to you know you see a lot of people who do rebrands and redesign concepts of current major league teams where right. they're like oh well we just want to modernize like you know, I don't know, the Minnesota Twins, because their logo hasn't changed in a long time. So somebody takes it upon themselves to, you know, put out a new, you know. You should probably do the Guardians one. I think you probably do a better job for <laughs> that, that logo. Just a thought. <laughs> yes, there's definitely that one's an interesting one for sure. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, yeah. you know, you see that kind of stuff a lot. But when you get to be very open with it, where you can kind of bring a modern design process mm -hmm. to an old team where you're drawing on city influences, drawing on the time frame, things that just weren't done at that time. It's, it's really exciting for me. And, you know, I think people enjoy, enjoy it for sure. Uh, absolutely. And then you go in and do Fort Wayne <coughs> Daisies, you know, and which is, you know, I will say my wife's, you know, favorite team, you probably yeah. wants to be part of the podcast. Yes. <laughs> she does that's all right i got a, i got two dogs you know i'm, I'm sitting you know dog sitting my my sister so i had to close the door oh, because gotcha. yeah she was a barker as well so don't yes. worry um so 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 tell me about the fort wayne daisies what you know inspired you to do something with them about this lo this specific team yeah you know i mentioned before the daisies i think are mm -hmm. one of the teams that 
people have some knowledge of in town. A because you know because of the movie right. League of Their Own, they're not featured in that. But I think it's regional yep. because all the teams are from around here. So it you know whenever anything about the movie comes out, local news is going to be like, well, did you know that there was a team here and you know whatever. Mm-hmm. And also, we're still at that point. The Tin Caps just recently did a Daisy's Night, had some players out, that sort of thing. But didn't they, got, didn't they use a, like a, a for, uh, Daisy's uh, kind of uniform yeah, as well? Yep, they did jerseys. Um, but yeah, so you still kind of have that remnant of, oh, well, my grandma or my aunt's friend or so-and-so. Actually, my grandma's cousin was the ball like the bat girl oh wow so, like, my dad actually a couple weeks ago sent me pictures that my grandma had dug out of like her with players when she was like six but so like that sort of that stuff is around in the community enough that people are aware of it yeah um but you don't really see much mm-hmm. there's not a whole lot you don't go into stores and see people selling it interesting um, you know it's just not that kind of celebrated it's more like yeah this existed and within it baseball circles be. it is yeah and i think too especially right now you know that's a very popular like women playing baseball mm-hmm. is a big that's a thing that's still being fought for right, right now i mean it's probably in all honesty not as successful as it was in the 40s Cause that right. league I think was much more successful than any of the women's baseball initiatives are right now. Right. And they play for like um, what, 12 years or something like that. Yeah. that they were, they were around or is people think that was like, Oh, it's only a couple of years. No, no, they were around for yeah. quite a while. Yeah. So, you know, and again, they never really had a logo, a brand. They even, some of the other teams had more of a logo, but if you look at like the jerseys from the daisies, it was just like the city seal. Um, Got so they it. didn't okay. really ever have, you would see little bits as you did at that time where you'd see one kind of logo in one place and then a completely different thing in a different place and some game programs that are pretty cool designs, mm-hmm. um, but not a real logo or anything to go off of. So that gave me some kind of creative freedom to be able to create some stuff on my own, um, without feeling like I was disrespecting the legacy of it. Right. But pay, you know, really, you are paying, you know, your respects to the team because I mean, it is beautiful the designs that you've done, you know, for it. I like the how like you have the uh, the baseball as the flower, yeah, uh, on the logo. So that's pretty cool stuff. I like it a lot. My wife, like I said, my wife is a huge fan of that. That is by far one of her favorite all time movies. So you know, League of Their Own. Um, so that was pretty cool. So w- walk me through uh, your, your design process, right? You know, I'm sure this takes you quite a bit of time to just come up with a, a logo or a whole brand when it comes to things like this. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely one of those people who once your brain is on something, it's hard to, you can't turn it off. Right. Um, so from the time I actually sit down at the computer to do something, it might seem like it doesn't take me long relatively to do some of this, but that's because it's been weeks of me looking passively doing research. Like we're sitting on the couch watching TV and I'm like scrolling through old pictures (laughs) and like I'm on the treadmill in the morning, like building things in my head. So by the time I actually sit down at a computer, I kind of already know what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Um, But it's been a lot of research. Definitely. Um, with a lot of these things where I'm either mm-hmm. getting inspiration from, you know, old teams, I'm doing a lot of looking into the, you know, just historical teams. That's um, awesome. From all levels, you know, ones that nobody's got any knowledge of. So when I'm able to finish a design on a team, you know, that played one season in 1940, you know, nobody's going to know about them. And that's not really for me, the point, but it gives me a starting point to create something. And, you know, Fort Wayne is definitely the pride in the city is growing. The city itself is growing so much. And Mm -hmm. so I think, you know, having cool designs that are Fort Wayne specific is just a cool thing that people will enjoy regardless of whether they know the history of the team or not. Um, Yeah. Right. Gives you a sense of pride and ownership of things like that. Yeah. And that's, 
if you look at what minor league baseball is now, it's the same thing. Like we go to tin caps games and I'm one of the six people of the 8,000 that are, you know, watching the game and know who the you know, top <laughs> prospect is for the other team or whatever. Like my favorite story to tell was we were at a, they played a triple a series. The Padres had their triple a team. This was five or six years ago, me and my dad went and the people behind us, the little kid asked, you know, which one's the tin caps? Well, the tin caps aren't playing, but the parents answered and told them one of the teams, like they didn't even know what right. team was playing, but people love the merchandise. They love what it means to the city. Um, so yeah, taking that and being able to create designs around that is really the most important thing, but then also pulling, you know, from, I have some stuff that's more just like local specific, not tied to a team, more tied to city pride and that sort of mm. stuff. Um, you know, that again, I'm pulling from, you know, if I find old advertisements in the city or just something I see design wise, that gives me an idea, you know, to kind of see how I can tweak it and turn it into something that, that fits what I'm doing is, is really what I'm constantly doing in my brain for sure. And there's no wrong way. You know, a lot of people no. are like, oh, that shouldn't, no, there is no wrong way. Why? Because it is your vision. If they think it's wrong, well then go ahead and do something. Right. Right. You know, if you think that is it's not supposed to look like that, then by all means, feel free to do your own design. Yeah. And if, you know, you have that thought, I've probably had 10 more of those thoughts because that's, you know, I'm always like, well, I could have done this this way. And I get very into the I'll send my mom or my wife or my friend like, hey, what, which one of these do you like the best? And they might not even know the difference in all of them. And it's like, <laughs> you know, because they're they're small tweaks and small things right. where it'll be like you know, one design I have that I really like that have done recently is it's got like FTW, like the Fort Wayne in like a old looking baseball, you know, I probably sent them with different laces, you know, and there, nobody's really going to look at that and be like, Oh, well, you, these laces are better than the other ones, but that's the kind of stuff I'm doing where I'm getting that. It's the little minutia, sure. the little yeah. things about it that just, you know, that you gotta, I, I get it. Hey, Amen. Oh, yeah. Shows pride again, yeah, shows pride in sure. what you're doing. And if you're not happy with it, then nobody else is going to be happy about right. it. No. <laughs> um, so uh, what other uh, what other work are you are you working on right now as far as um, your uh, design for your for your company? Yeah. So uh, pretty recently, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I launched a collaboration with a local Little League site. Um, nice it's called Elmhurst little league. They're kind of close to where our house is now. I remember playing there when I was little. Um, but they've been very active on social media recently, which isn't super normal for a little league, especially a smaller site. There's a couple bigger sites here that it makes more sense, but mm -hmm. I, it was clear that they were trying to really up their game and do that. So I reached out to them, you know, and asked about, you know, some ideas of if they were interested in that and they were very receptive to it. So I kind of went through that process, found some old pictures and created some unique designs for them that they're uh, selling as a fundraiser um, for their, uh, for their league. So they're selling them in their concession stand when they have games and that sort of thing. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. So that's really cool. And I want to be able to do more stuff like that. Uh, try to collaborate with, different organizations um because that i think is where the company can grow at a certain point you know i can always create designs um you know and go through history and pull some of that stuff but at a certain point you're gonna you're gonna hit a wall mm -hmm. where there's only so much and fort wayne's only so big it'd be different if you're in chicago or even cleveland or somewhere where you've got so many years of history in a big city, but then you can get into suburbs and that sort of stuff too. Mm -hmm. um, but really trying to build up the, the community aspect has been really exciting for me. I've talked to a couple, um, you know, training facilities in town, um, working with a couple minor league guys that are from here. They've been doing some stuff. Um, we, they've helped me out with some photo shoots and things like that. That's awesome. Um, that's cool. And then actually, by the time this comes out tomorrow, uh, we are launching with uh, both of our friends, Mark. Uh, yeah, Ballpark Mark Vickas. Hunter. I was just yeah. going to ask you about yeah. this, man. Not kidding. I was like looking at it right now. His t-shirts are on your on your site right now. Yes. Um, 
Yeah. So tomorrow we're going to launch that. He had me on his show. I don't think that has uh, come out yet, but yeah, you know, talking to him and was like, Hey, you know, you've got some really, you know, the, the sock logo that he uses as his Twitter profile. Right. And, um, you know, was like, if you've ever interested in getting into selling shirts or hats or whatever, let me know. I'd be happy to, you know, work with you on it. He was very into the idea. So I put together some designs, um, for him. So we're going to, we're going to launch that tomorrow. Um, it's going to be a pre-order thing. Um, so we're going to run it for about a month, uh, sell those, uh, try to get him some recognition, but things like that, just to try to grow within this, this baseball community that I am lucky enough to have sort of found my way into when I started this, that was, I think one of those things that you, and I know for you, it probably sounds silly to think that for me, like, being on your show, being on Mark's show, those were like big goals for me of like, if guys like you are recognizing what I'm doing, like that means I've gotten into the right area. Oh, Um, dude. Yeah. No, I, I, you know, I'm with, I am the same way. It's like, you know, when, when I started in this community, like, first of all, they're so welcoming. Everybody's been so welcoming and everybody's so supportive of each other. It's like, you know, as soon as you say that, make sure you tag me because like, you know, it's like, Everybody wants to help each other out. And that's yeah. the best part about this, man. I love yeah. it. And I think that's definitely part of the inspiration, you know, in starting this as well was listening to, you know, your show, Mark's show, Paul's show, even like the minor league baseball podcast with, you know, the Ben Hill, yeah, his stuff and all of that about kind of that community around minor league baseball and just baseball in general, lower level baseball, um, you know, that's very exciting for me. So working with Mark on those designs is really, has, is really fun. And I'm looking forward to getting and that launched. First of all, congratulations. That's Thank amazing. You. Yeah. Uh, second, you know, I, a lot of people really don't like to, you know, they, they put down the mining leagues, right. But if you think about it, you know, there's so many people who are trying to get into the majors or, you know, from, you know, playing or, you know, media coverage, content creation and all that that the minor leagues are so overlooked that they're missing such a gem, right? There's so yeah. many things that you can do. And I've found so many cool people and so many cool brands because of it. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, have been in the sports industry for so long, you know, working in lower level, not in minor league baseball, um, but, but you know, at yeah. the lower level where you're, so you have an appreciation for what goes into it and, also from a design aspect and just all of those things kind of pile up to where it's almost more exciting to me than, you know, like, obviously I'm going to follow the Cubs, but like, right. Absolutely. If I'm looking for a random game. Odds are I'm going to probably turn on a minor league game or an independent league game or whatever, just cause I'm interested in, you know, am I going to follow the team day in day out? No, but if you turn on and see kind of what they're doing with their broadcast and how their stadiums constructed and, that the community around it and all of that is it's the same reason I think I got into soccer is, you know, I'm a big soccer fan. You can see, yeah, I've got, oh, uh, yeah. I, I'm looking at yeah. Indy, not as many got, as hats, um, right? But I see, you have Indy. Hats, but yes, I, I see Chicago fire. I see yep. the hot spurs like back there, you yep. know, so I, you know, I, I, I see them, man. Yeah. But you know, that kind of is the same thing. I think obviously I enjoy watching the game, but the community and the, the, you know, culture around it, I think is Mm -hmm. almost as appealing. And this level of baseball, I think is, is very similar. And, and you're right. You know, like, you know, when you say with soccer, right? Like you got USL one, you know, you got USL two is a championship, right? So you got these lower level minor league uh, soccer teams that not a lot of people know about, but should know about. Yeah. Right. And obviously MLS, right. Uh, which is, you know, it's on its own thing, you know, they're super popular, a fast growing sport here in the U S so I'm with you. And I'm sure you look at, all right, let's look at their logos. Let's look at their uniforms. What are they wearing? Look at their kits, you know, things like that. Right. Yep. Yeah, definitely. And like looking at their social media is for, and a lot of these teams I've done research on, you know, that's a lot of my off season work in when you work in sports is research and you're looking up like, what, how are they selling tickets? What promotion nights are they doing, you know, to try to spark ideas for yourself, but you kind of just end up falling in love with Mm -hmm. the idea um, very much where you can't, you know, you can't really get away from it at all for sure. 
and the best way for fans to to start loving a team during the off season it is by how they interact with people on social media definitely right I mean, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a firm believer. That's why, you know, teams like uh, the Danville Otterbots, the, yeah. you know, the Burlington Sock Puppets, right? Portland Pickles all the way on the West Coast, right? Cleveland Railroaders. Those guys have figured out that social media, it's a tool and it's free. Mm -hmm. And it's a tool that they can use to promote their, their teams. And then, you know, that's why you see so many, uh, has so many shirts and all that because they know they get it, you know? Yeah, definitely. And that's, you know, you, those teams you all listed off are ones that, you know, I kind of have grown a real appreciation for just because of the different, you know, with the outer bots, it's the ambassador program that, yep. you know, I know I've heard on multiple shows recently. And then, you know, what the sock puppets have done, you know, just with that brand in general is so fun. And, you know, the pickles again, another one that yeah. their thing for me that I like is yes, yeah, the logo is funny, but it's what they've done to bring such a professional type atmosphere without seeming professional. Like they keep it fun and casual, oh, but yeah. then they like people are still bringing lawn chairs to the game, but they've got thousands of people bringing lawn chairs to games and like doing the lifting them above their heads. And like, it's become such like a, a niche popular yeah. thing that that's, what's so just it's so fun to watch and see it be successful and i'll tell you this i i and i'll i'll stand by this all day every day i much would much rather go and spend my money at a minor league game or an indie ball game than a major league game they know Definitely. because at least don't know who you are right they'll get to appreciate that you are spending their money there over yeah. a major league team it's just how the hell that goes it's it's yeah. as simple as that Definitely. At, at a major league game you're a number yeah for sure and there's you know there's reasons for both of you know if you oh uh, don't get me wrong i'm still watching things. my guardians oh still watching no definitely them. but you know like i go when i go to a major league game i go to it in a completely different way than you go to a minor Correct. league game and that's you know that's what everybody does i just don't think everybody realizes it mm -hmm. um in the same way for sure absolutely absolutely uh, and again you know uh, like I said, I'm a huge fan of your brand, man. You know, like I, 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 I found out, you know, about them through a simple name. Yeah. Well, not really simple, but yeah, you know, a no, name that nobody sure. know, knew about. Right. That is forgotten into history. Yes. So are you working to do, like you said, you, you mentioned it earlier, like you're looking to do any more like logos for uh, some of those teams that are been forgotten by history to try to bring them back and then put them on your site? Yeah, definitely. Um, one that I'm really starting to pick up a little bit. Um, I was kind of keeping it a little under, yeah, 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 undercover. But there's a there used to be a very large uh, General Electric plant in Fort Wayne um, mm -hmm. that they're currently remodeling into a huge. It's been a years in the works thing. They're called Electric Works, where they're you know refurbishing that whole old abandoned factory into offices and nice. restaurants and it's going to be amazing and it's supposed to open this fall it's like a mile and a half from our house um, wow so it, it's it's really cool and it's really exciting in the city but one thing you know at, back in the 40s 50s even into probably into the 70s um you know a lot of those big companies had teams basketball teams baseball teams softball teams whatever um and the general electric baseball team was very successful. Um, I think they even won like the NBC world series, whatever iteration that was back in the forties, fifties. Um, they won it a couple of times. Um, so that's one I'm kind of toying with some ideas on, you know, to try to get it up and going around the time when the, the building opens and that uh, project finishes. That's um, awesome. Kind of tie that together. Cause that's one that it's very recognizable. Um, mm -hmm. just the outline of the building, the logos, all of that, but be cool. again, the, the baseball team is not known the sport side of it's not known. Um, but so, for you to create that, that'd yeah. be super cool. Yep. Yeah. So that one I'm really excited about. I've been doing a lot of, I've been on the library's website, looking through old, like they've archived old G, <laughs> you know, newsletters and things like that, trying to find design elements and any old photos and things like that. So 
it's definitely, you now know why people catalog all that stuff that you think was a waste of somebody's time. Oh yeah, no, I'm with you. It's definitely not because I've, you know, used it a lot. So that's cool. That's an exciting one for me. Right. Love it, man. That's awesome. I cannot wait to see what you come up with. And again, you know, like you said, you were, you, you just got done doing some work with, uh, with our, our, with our friend here, Mark Viquez, you know, Mm -hmm. ballpark hunter. So that's awesome as well. Uh, I, the future is bright for you, my friend. Yeah. All right. So we're, we're at that part, you know, are you ready for these questions? Yes. All right. I'll start, I'll start with the first one. Right. And then we'll go from there. Um, you go to the ballpark. So you go to a 10 calf game with your wife. What is your food and drink of choice? My friend. Hmm. I'm definitely, I think worse off pretzel people. Nice. Um, Okay. That's that's a go-to drink. I'm not a big beer guy. Mm -hmm. Um, so I generally just go with the, with a soda. Mm-hmm. The, the oh, I'm option. with you there. Um, but, but yeah, definitely pretzel, pretzel all the way. I think. Nice. I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, if you could travel to any place on earth, where would you go? Hmm. I think really Australia is somewhere I'm Don't very interested too. to go. I have like two of my really good friends, both did a semester abroad there. Um, and they talk about it all the time. And I, Really, I think during the pandemic, you know, when that was one of the few places that right. kind of had some sort of function, I started watching um, like Australian rules football and some rugby and things like that. And it just oh. seems like a great place to visit right. for sure. And now they have their Australian baseball league. Yes. So, I mean, yep. why not? Right. Uh, let's take a look here. Uh, what is the most interesting place you've ever been to? Hmm. Interesting place. Not a lot. I've never left the country. Um, so definitely nothing super interesting in that aspect. Um, okay. Trying to think, you know, we did a cross country uh, drive back from California, visiting uh, my wife's family out. She has family out in Pasadena. So we flew out and then drove back with her dad. So, you know, staying in some roadside type hotels in the middle of Utah um, definitely is an interesting thing. Dude, that's sure. awesome though. That's a yeah. cool, I've never done that. Yeah. Very fun. One of the best pizzas we've ever, we were just talking about that. One of the best pizzas we ever had in our life was in Salina, Utah, a town really? of probably six people. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a town of like nothing. And the best pizza yeah. there was, it was like a there. hotel, a Denny's and a pizza place. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> you pick correct. You pick correct. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. Um, all right. Let's see here. Um, I want, I want to give you some good ones because, uh, if you, if you had to relocate, where would you, where would you at least like to live besides Fort Wayne? Definitely. I think San Diego, San That's Diego. One, really? We always, t- we always go back and forth between Chicago and San Diego, totally different styles of living. Pick the weather, pick the weather. But yes. Pick the weather. <laughs> we went, her sister got married out there. We went and I could have stayed forever. It was, it was, <laughs> it was a great time. We really enjoyed it. I like it. I like it. Uh, who's your, who is your favorite or still your favorite superhero? Uh, wasn't really big into superheroes growing up, but I think movie wise, I probably enjoy Iron Man movies the most. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I, I mean, Hey, listen, I, I'm, I was a fan when the first one came out, yeah. right. All the way through, you know, the very last one, RIP Iron Man. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> so, uh, what, what Disney princess do you think would make the best spy? make the best spy this is one you asked on a show i listened to recently and i even thought i should have this answer in the can and i didn't um see and i brought it up look at that yeah hmm i know probably i might have to go rapunzel partially because i've seen tangled more than any (laughs) of them it's my wife's one of her favorite movies so i've watched it a bunch (laughs) but i definitely could see her being able to to pull off some spy some spy stuff and and i'll say this again and a lot of people were going to probably hear this on the podcast a couple of times (laughs) the iron cast you know like that that thing is just you know so why not why not um let's take a look here do you think that cereal is a soup no because partially because i'm a dry cereal person i can't do cereal wait what so, you're yeah, saying you I, like cereal but not but, without any milk yeah more as a snack thing not as like a breakfast okay okay, okay. yeah all right gotcha yeah. all right so a handful here and there and let's yeah, keep yeah. going yeah. got it okay okay 
Uh, if animals could talk, which one do you think would be the rudest animal? The rudest? Probably an emu. They always just, or an ostrich. They kind of seem in the same. Yeah. At the zoo, they always yeah. seem really angry. Yeah, they always look at you, you know, very yeah, condescending. I like it. I think you're right. I think you're right. Uh, let's see here. A couple more, and then we'll get you out of here. All right. What will be your weapon of choice in the zombie apocalypse? Oh, boy. I think you have to go with some some sort of blade. You know, you you see all these movies, and right. they always shoot at them, and that never does anything. That really so it's it's got to be, you got to slice and dice them. That's the only way to have a chance, I think. All right. If you could have two dead players and you know sit down and have dinner with who would those players be hmm. you know i think as a cubs fan ernie banks is definitely of course of course one it's a great choice um, you know he just seems like a fun guy to hang out with and also partially in that same vein as ron sano and that's more of him as a broadcaster <laughs> than as a player because i right. grew up listening to pat and ron on the radio and it's the most entertaining you know, it was like a three and a half hour stand up set between the two of them with a game in between. I like so it. I think he would be a fun person to be around. That, and that's what what games get good, right? You know, when the when the announcer, the play by play caller and the color commentator are having a natural conversation while at the same time calling the game makes the whole game a whole yeah. lot worth it. You know, it. you know, it's good. And they have a good rapport when the pitch like almost seems like a distraction, <laughs> like right, they don't exactly. have to talk about the game. <laughs> Because at a certain point, like if it's a 6-0 game in the middle of June and it, nobody, it's fine. Like we want right. to hear your story more than anything. Like we just like you, you yeah. guys talk about different things. I like yeah, it. Absolutely. You're sure. absolutely right. Uh, let me see here. Um, uh, okay. So what sport would be the funniest to add a mandatory of alcohol consumption during a game? Hmm. Right, you got. You got I think you have to say. I think you have to say hockey just because of the balance oh on God. the skates. Right. I think that has to be the answer. Like, like I don't know. Right, if you add alcohol to the hockey, well, we don't know if there are already some of them are not even drinking. Well, but to like, but... yeah, but to like amateur <laughs> level hockey, because I think like NHL players could probably skate right like, completely trashed and be fine. But once you get down into like adult league, those guys, <laughs> they're probably not good enough skaters to be able to skate in the first have, place when they've been super drunk. So yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. That's a good one. That is a good one. You're right. I like that one. All right. Um, what, if you could be any character in any movie, who that character would be. Hmm. I'm just like running through my, my favorite movie <laughs> category. You know, I almost, I want to say one of the, the un, unshown member of the Anchorman crew. I think that would be, I don't want to replace any of them, but I want to be added to the, to the crew. You want to be part of the crew. Yes. I yes. like it. Well, that is in San Diego, quick. which is right. even better. So that's San Diego. Two birds with one stone. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, man. You are right. Hey, look, this is a lot of fun. Thank you yeah, so much. For sure. uh, where can people find you on social media, my friend? Yeah, we're at uh, Old Fort Baseball Co. on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Um, and then oldfortbaseballco.com. Perfect. Yeah. And I'll put, make sure to put all of this information on the, awesome. so that way can, people can follow you. Uh, I am looking forward to see what you come up with next, my friend, because yeah. like I said, I am a fan. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Ed. It's been fun. Thanks, bud. I hope you guys enjoy that episode with uh, Logan. Make sure you guys are uh, following him on Instagram and on Twitter. I did put all of that information on the show notes, as well as I put the link to his website. The reason I did that is because I want you guys to help him out. It's a small business. He sells a lot of cool logos out there, the Daisies, Kikiangas, and as well as he did that collaboration with our friend Mark Viquez of Ballpark Hunter. That is also there, so you guys will be helping out two people. Now, before I go, make sure you guys are hitting the subscribe button on the podcast, as well as giving it five stars. Five stars means I go up on the rankings. More people get to listen to it because of that. And now, guys, question for you. What building has the most stories? A library. 
Okay, I'll see myself out. <laughs> All right, guys, keep on grinding and always support the minor leagues. See ya. Go on, get out of here. Bye. This podcast is part of the Curved Brim Media Network. Here are some of the other members of Curved Brim Media. Hi, this is Ed Rivera of the Data Chronicles. Join me as I interview people just like you and players, coaches, GMs on the path that led you to become a fan of the sport. I'm Paul Caputo, and on the Baseball by Design podcast, I talk to minor league baseball teams, designers, and other super interesting people about what these minor league baseball logos mean. And I talk a little bit about ice cream helmets. What's up, Bucketheads? I'm Anna DiTomaso, and each week on the Baseball Bucket List podcast, I speak with a different fan about their favorite baseball memories, what the game means to them, and what's left to check off on their baseball bucket list. Hey guys, this is Patrick Larson from the Minor League Baseball Hat History Series. And in every episode, I go through the history of minor league teams through my personal collection of hats. You can find me on Twitter at at PatLarson1. I hope you guys enjoy. This is Patrick. And Corey. Of BaseballMapper.com. And we have made an interactive map to help highlight all baseball teams from the majors down to collegiate summer leagues. We want to bring you closer to baseball. So get on the site and find a team near you today. Learn more about Curve Brim Media at curvebrimmedia.com.